Hi and welcome. Now that we have a database in place, we need to add another validations to sign up process. We must ensure that email and username are unique because both of these fields will serve as user identifiers. We already added this restriction to database schema, so it will throw an exception on that level if we try it, so let's have a look. If we go to browser and try to submit this form with existing username, you can see here that I have 500 status and an error that tells me that key RAMG already exists. It works, but nothing happens on the client side. And the database validation, database check is always the last resort. We need, of course, to validate data in our code. Let's start from server-side validation. That's how I prefer to progress. First, handle the most important server-side and then improve it on client as well. So we're going back to our editor and let's open route users. And right here we use validate input function. And this function is used both by server and by client. But client has no access to database stuff, of course. So we're going to define new high order function that will use this function and enhance it with checking data for uniqueness. So let's rename this validate input import to be, for example, common validations, something like that. And here let's define our higher order function. We call it validate input and it will take data and other validations function. And the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna run this other validation. It's a synchronous function, so it's safe to do that. We're going to deconstruct and take only errors from it. And we pass data to this function. We do not need to get is valid because we need to recheck it after checking for uniqueness. And now we need to check for uniqueness. And that means that we need to query a database. And working with database means a synchronous code. And Bookshelf allows us to work with promises. And that means that we'll return promise from this function somehow. We're going to return promise. And that means that we can't use it anymore like this because this code becomes a synchronous. So it works with promises. So instead of this here, we're going to call validate input with request body and we're going to pass common validations to it. And then we'll have our function. It will have the same object. So we're going to deconstruct it, errors and is valid. And now we just move this code into the then callback like this. Okay, back to validate input here. So, so we need to check if the user with email or username exists in database. There are two ways we can do that. We can make two queries to database separately, or we can make only one query and then check the result. Let me show you both ways. So in first case, we're gonna query the database for each check like this. We're gonna use this user and we construct where email equals data email. Then we fetch it. It returns promise, so we have then, which has this user here. And if user is found, then we set errors email to message. There is user with such email. And the second one is the same. We just use username for it. So we're making two queries and that makes it to two promises. We need to wait when both of them are fulfilled and then return result object. We can do that with promise.all. So we can do something like this. We're gonna return this promise and all function takes an array of promises. So we're gonna shift these two promises right here. So I need to remove semicolon. And when both of these promises are fulfilled, we're gonna use then. And inside of this then, we're gonna return object errors and is valid, is the same, is empty, errors. Where can we find this promise all? We're gonna import it from Bluebird. So we're gonna look here. So we import promise from Bluebird. And also let's import, of course, is empty from Lodash is empty. Okay, so now I need to npm 
install Scythe Bluebird. Okay, so let's recap what we did. So we have this new high order function. It takes our common function with synchronous validations, which are used both in clients on the server. It runs it and takes errors from it. And then it makes two queries to database. And first it searches for user by email, then for by username. And if user is found, then we add error messages. And then we return when both of these promises are fulfilled, we return the object with these errors and is valid. And then when we use it, we deconstruct this object right here. And so we can use errors and is valid as we did before. So let's try it out in a browser. So here we have our sign up form. And when we click sign up, we'll have both of these fields invalidated. Okay, it works. Nice. But we query database twice and forced to use promise.all to handle it. Not really good. Let's try another approach. So instead of using two promises here, I'm going to return only one promise, which is returned from the bookshelf. So we have this user and we create query for it. The first one is where email equals to data that email and the second one is or where username equals data username then we fetch it and we have a problem so we have then which returns user and now if user is found we need to populate errors and we need to check by which field it was found so we can do something like user get username and get is the method provided to us by bookshelf to access data on our model. So if username equals to data username, so then we'll have errors that username equal to that message. Okay, and the same thing goes for email. So if it has email and it equals to data email, we have error message for it. And at the end, when we done with this check, we just return the same object that we return here, like this. Okay, so we can return this promise that all all together. So this way, we make only one request, and then we analyze the returned user. And of course, if there are no users, so errors will be unaltered and will be returned here. And also, we do not need promise library anymore. So let's have a look in the browser. I'm going to sign up again. And we have the same thing. So if I change it and sign up again, you see that now username is valid. And the same goes for email, of course. Nice. So let's commit. So we validate username and email uniqueness on server. Thanks for your time. And if you found this episode useful, please share it with your friends. To get updates about new episodes, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter. And of course, you can always ask any questions you have on associated blog post. All links are in the description. Take care and see you later.